All right, guys, our next guest on the season with Peter Schrager is one of the most dynamic defensive players in the league this year. When we had Kwesi Adolfo Mensa, the GM of the Vikings, before the season started on the podcast, I asked him, give me one player we should know about. Just give me... And he mentioned Josh Metellus. And I immediately start Googling, well, Josh's story. Sure enough, here we are heading into week 15. And Josh Metellus is one of the top defensive backs in the sport right now. And he is joining us on the podcast. Vikings, I want to say DB, but you could say linebacker, <laughs> safety, whatever. Josh, welcome to the pod. What's up? What's up, Peter? Thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, man, uh, it's been some months since that happened. Uh, you know, I've been getting a lot of questions about that uh, that interview and, uh, you know, just to see, you know, where this has gone and where this has gone. And, uh, you know, for people to really see, you know, my impact on this team uh, is a great feeling. All right. So you're drafted in 2020 yep. and you're playing special teams for the most part. You're a two team, ca two time captain this year, though, career high 13 starts. And you're one of only two players in the NFL to have at least a sack one interception and four forced fumbles. You're doing it all. And we're going to get to the positions that you're playing, <laughs> but you had to wait for this opportunity. I mean, you weren't a first round pick. Talk about your perseverance and knowing that your time would come. Uh, yeah, man, I would say uh, a lot of it is just the uh, type of person I am. Uh, I'm very relentless. Uh, you know, I, I even talked to the team about this uh, in camp. You know, I think this league is built on your confidence and your resiliency uh, to get back when it knocks you down. And, uh, you know, for me, it happened very early, drafted, but then cut, you know, a month later, you know, uh, at the uh, camp cut dates, uh, brought back on the team on P-Squad, you know, finally get a shot on special teams, you know, having to make my way through there. Then, uh, you know, come in, you know, they draft guys, you know, for my spot, just having to fight through that. Then we get a whole new coaching staff. So, you know, there's always been that sense of, you know, having to fight for my spot. And uh, but I just knew, you know, I just had to break through. And uh, I always told myself, you know, once I get that one opportunity, that one shot, I'm going to make sure that, you know, they can never take me off the field. And, uh, and lo and behold, you know, I've, I've set myself up, you know, for exactly where I wanted to be. You know, there's there's this this quote that I think John Harbaugh um, uses a lot. Nobody cares. Work harder. And it's, yeah. you know, and, and I tweeted that out with an image yesterday. And the image was from the Fox broadcast. And it says, Josh Metellus, positions played this season. I'm going to list them strong safety, free safety, left cornerback, right cornerback, slot cornerback, left inside linebacker, right inside linebacker, middle linebacker, left outside linebacker, right outside linebacker, right defensive end, left defensive tackle. You've played 13 different <laughs> defensive positions. Is that, something that you keep track of or it's just hey wherever you need me coach put me in. yeah it's, for me it's, it's just plays just line up here and do this you know it's not even uh really like positions for me you know they call it we're all x's so it doesn't really matter uh you know in our room but when you look at it on paper it sounds kind of crazy but then when you look at the tape you know it kind of looks crazy too so uh, <laughs> just what we do you know it works for us um, I'm just, you know, I'm, I, I would just tell people I'm a football player. You know, I just want to play football. You know, I think I'm really good at it. It doesn't matter where you put me. I just want to uh, make game changing plays. You know, it's 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 interesting because Flores comes in and a lot of you guys were all there last year. There's been a couple additions. The rookie pace has been a revelation. But that Vikings defense, when you hold a team to zero points and you keep your team in it with all the different quarterback changes and win three nothing, it's easy to look at the defensive coordinator and then you look at the players on the field. You and Flores seem to have a great chemistry and seem to speak the same language. He is high on intellect, high on being prepared, and also he'll throw a lot of stuff at you. Um, has it been just a sensational time learning from this guy? And what has the Flores effect had on you as a player? Yeah, I mean, I would say it's been uh, life changing. Um, I think, you know, his uh, his impact, you know, not only for his team, but for me in general has been huge um, from the first time I met him. Uh, one of the first things I said about him was just you can see the experience oozing out of him when he walks through the through these holes, and uh, I think you know just his uh, his intellect and you know the way he carries himself and the way he respects the game. I think has uh, inspired our whole team. You know, especially on the defensive side, it's definitely inspired me. Um, I, if I ever wanted to coach, you know, I would want to be a coach just like him. You know, uh, I think he has a great way of just you know inspiring guys and um, getting guys ready to go. You know, teaching the fundamentals and what it takes to actually win football games. And uh, I think he's, you know, he's doing a great job and, uh, you know, we're lucky to have him.
I've mentioned this Ivan Pace already three times in this interview, but when you have 13 <laughs> tackles and you are all over the field and you're an undrafted guy doing that in your first year, a lot of the a lot of the listeners of this podcast don't watch the Vikings every week. They've never heard of Ivan Pace Jr. When he walked into camp as an undrafted guy out of Cincinnati, did you know he'd be leading all rookies in tackles a couple months later? Did you have a feeling? Uh, I, I, after a week of practice, I did. Um, you you know he come in. He's a quiet kid. Um, he was really to himself, you know, I think, you know, it really was just the fact that he was mad that he went undrafted, you know, he, he had that chip on his shoulder. So, you know, he didn't talk to anybody. He was just by his work. But uh, the minute he stepped on the football field and we put on cleats and he ran around, you instantly knew he was going to show up, uh, popped on the tape and instantly a uh, guy who loves football, who loves to be around the ball. And, uh, you know, I think uh, me and him, we, we hit it off because, you know, we have that same dog mindset, um, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't matter what size we are, how fast we are, you know, we're going to find a way to make an impact. And uh, he's been huge for this team. And uh, I'm excited to see where he, he goes. You know, he's been growing a lot, especially in these past couple of weeks, you know, having to uh, step up and call the plays. So, you know, I think uh, his his uh, his career is going to go in a great trajectory if, you know, he keeps it up and he keeps doing the work that he's doing. Tell me really quick about the uh, celebration you guys had in the keg stand. I saw you. You were the one who was dizzy walking. That was me in college. I was like, I 44 with the captain's logo. That's me. That's Peter Schrager 20 years ago. Uh, is that kind of stuff orchestrated? When do you work on a keg stand uh, uh, celebration? Yeah, uh, yeah we have uh, one of our uh, DB, rookie DBs, Najee Thompson, our uh, special teams uh, gunner. He's, uh, he's a celebration coordinator about, I would say, like eight weeks ago. Uh, you know, when we were like two and four, you know, trying to make our way out, uh, Flo appointed him as a uh, coordinator. So, That's you know, an actual I, conversation. Yes, Flores is like, yes. you know what, Najee, you've earned that title. You are going to be the celebration coordinator. That's, that's exactly how you said it. And uh, every every uh, day before the game, the meeting before the game, that Saturday night, uh, Friday night, whatever day we play on, um, we have a, a lot of time for him to come and talk to us and show us the celebrations. And, you know, we talk through them, we, we, you know, we practice them however you want to do it. Uh, but yeah, we, 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 we definitely, uh, we definitely plan those and uh, they're not just something we just think of right on the spot. Uh, they all have meaning to it. Um, and uh, that means something to us. I'm looking at these stats and Josh Metellus, number 44 for the Vikings. I, I see the leaders of quarterback pressures from defensive back position. You lead the NFL with 23. The next closest number is 15. You have eight more quarterback <laughs> pressures than any other defensive back in the league. Talk about getting to the quarterback and rushing off the edge and how much you enjoy doing that. Oh, I love it. Uh, I said uh, in another life, I would be an outside linebacker and just uh, rush the passer for a living. I think uh, it's an art and, uh, you know, it's definitely appreciated. You know, that's why they get paid the big bucks. But, uh, you know, me as a DB, uh, I always admired it, you know, and this year finally getting a chance to do it is uh, something I definitely took pride in. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it feels, you know, just uh, it's a different feeling, you know, when you could get the guy down, you know, save your DBs, you know, from having to cover too long and, you know, just impact the game in a different way. And, uh, you know, being with guys like Daniil and uh, DJ Wanham, you know, you get a lot of attention taken away. And you got Ivan Pace, you know, running through guys' faces. You know, it's a you got 2-2 two -two coming off the edge. You know, it's just a, a lot of a lot of a lot of guys moving around and then I just sneak my way in, you know, make an impact that way. Uh, yeah, but I, I loved it. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to see where, you know, we keep building this thing. All right. As we're as we're wrapping, because you got meetings. I love it. We don't often do the the players. We <laughs> should do coaches and GMs on this podcast. I love that we have a current player who's actually uh, a huge part of this Saturday game that you guys have. Talk about you. Where'd you grow up? Talk about your household growing up and then maybe your path to the NFL just a little bit and shed some light on the people that helped you get here. Yeah. So I'm uh, originally from uh, North Miami, Florida, uh, born and raised there. Um, I grew up with a single mom. Uh, my dad was uh, in my life uh, a little bit growing up and uh, I have uh, six, uh, I'm the oldest of six kids. So uh, I always really been that, you know, leader in that type of role, you know, having to take on a lot of, uh, like I said, my mom has four kids on uh, her side, so uh, I was always always in the house uh, with three other kids, having to uh, you know be the the oldest male in the house. So that was something that always you know just uh, primed me for a position of leadership. And uh, you know, we moved a lot as a kid. My mom had me when she was in high school, so you could just imagine the struggles she had. And uh, you know, it was just a lot of uh, resiliency. You know, a lot of having to stand back up on my feet, knowing you know I've been knocked down. 
and a lot of, you know, working hard when I don't see the light, I don't see the, the uh, and I, I can't uh, picture, you know, what it would look like, but I know it's going to be there if I just keep working hard. And uh, I go start playing football, fall in love with the game, go to uh, high school, I'm playing running back. You know, we need a guy to play safety in a seven on seven game, in a seven on seven tournament. I go play safety, fall in love with that. Kind of like how I'm doing now, just put myself in a position to just play football, you know, figuring it out later. And, you know, I figured that out, you know, end up getting a scholarship to Michigan, going up there. Time out. You get a scholarship to Michigan. What's your mother's reaction when she finds oh, out you're getting, I mean, to, Michigan's one of the top institutions in the world. Crazy. Um, uh, My mom was so excited. Uh, I, That was one of the biggest things, you know, uh, as a child for me was, you know, finding a way to get a scholarship. Uh, I had actually a couple academic scholarships, you know, before I had my first football scholarship. That's awesome. So she was excited for those two. So, you know, it was kind of uh, a win-win. And, uh, you know, I get to Michigan. Uh, I actually play my first uh, – my start my first game at linebacker, you know, trying to just fit fit in, you know, trying to Wherever. find my, my freshman year. They moved me back to safety, played three years there, um, and come out, uh, meet my wife uh, at the end of college, uh, going into the league. And, uh, you know, we have our we have our son. And it's just, you know, for me, it's just been a lot of uh, a lot of successes in my life, you know, off the field. That's just been, uh, you know, just a result of hard work and uh, putting my head down, you know, doing the right things, living the right way, you know, treating people the right way. And, you know, I think uh, as a player and just as a person, you know, I just want to shed light. I want to give light. You know, I want to be that driving force for somebody, you know, any way I can help. And, uh, you know, that's just how I am with the team. That's just how I am as a person. I, I look at you as not only an ambassador of North Florida or North Miami and what you've done at Michigan, but like, you, it's kind of cool to now have this feeling as like, hey, Vikings, put us anywhere, put us against any team. We'll figure it out. Take our quarterback. We'll figure it out. Have our free agent running back. That was our superstar be somewhere mm-hmm. else. We'll figure it out. Um from the Zill family, you know, Ziggy and from the Will family from Ziggy on to Mark to down to the GM to the coach. Do you feel like this Vikings team is something special and you guys can go on a bit of a run right now? Oh, 100 uh, percent. I love our organization. I think top to bottom, uh, they're doing great things. And uh, it's definitely shown within the players and uh, within uh, just the culture of this team. Um, I, I say, I mean, you know, we were voted number one in the best organization. And I would say I uh, firmly believe that that's true. You know, we have great we have great leadership here. And uh, I think, you know, it's going to show in this month of December, you know, where football matters the most. You know, we're going to show our true our true uh, characteristics and, and our, the, true, the true value of this team will show in this month, you know, as we, you know, head to uh, make the playoffs. Number 44 captain's C on the chest. We're all going to be watching Saturday. You're going to be out there. Uh, super excited, dude. It is great to get to know you. I'm a huge fan having not known you, just knowing your game and your story. Uh, and this was awesome. Thank you, Josh. I appreciate it. Thank you, Peter. I'm a big fan of you as well.